what's happening? Today we're going to actually be making some paint and I'm going to take you along on this journey. So if you're interested in learning how to make watercolor paint, stick around. I'm going to show you how to do it. If you're new here, I'm the Chief Pixel Pusher and Paint Brusher over at Gumption. You can find my work over at IHaveGumption.com or even PageWeber.net. I'm an illustrator, a muralist, and a painter, and I love anything art related. So if you're here, that probably means you do too. We're going to be talking about how to make your own paint. So I'm going to walk you through this process and I want to give you a little backstory about it before we get too far into this. So if you watched my most recent video, you'll have seen that I was checking out Beam Handmade Paints. These are cool paints that are made uh, in Canada by an indigenous woman named Anong Beam. And she is a very talented artist as well as uh, a paint maker. And never before had I ever been interested in exploring what it might take to make your own paint until I learned a little bit about her and how she's able to use resources from her area to create pigments. And so I scoured YouTube to see what do people use to make paint. And I'm going to share my knowledge with you today because, hey, maybe you'd be interested in making your own paint too. So first, you have to have a pigment to create paint with. And once you have a pigment, then you can create all kinds of different paints. Uh, I chose to go a more streamlined route uh, because I just wanted to see what the consistency of the paint that I could make with the resources I could find would be. And then I thought maybe I might expand on that as I learn a little bit more about binders and um, different measurements for binders and such. So I started with pigments and then I also got the Schmincke Aquarelle binder. Now binder is usually made up of gum arabic and honey. Sometimes people will use clove oil to keep it from um, creating, getting mold and they add different things to their binder to me create this binder that combined with your pigment creates paint. It's really actually not rocket science from what I can tell. I'm a noob so I could be wrong. But uh, I think finding those special quantities of honey versus gum arabic, um, that is where the magic is. I decided I wasn't quite ready for that, so I would get a pre-made binder and then I would find my own pigments to see if I could create something that was as good as some of the stuff that I've been using. And so, you know, I have a couple different kinds of pigment here that I have found. For someone who loves instant gratification, I will tell you, you have to wait for the paint to dry and set up in its um, whatever receptacle you put it in. You can still use it right away. If you, if you want to travel with it, you have to make sure that it's set up before you travel so it doesn't make a mess. A little advice from me to you. There's a whole lot more that I can learn and I'm just using basic uh, supplies, basic tools to create my own paint. You can grind your own paint from rocks and create your own pigment and your own binder. Uh, and this is in no way uh, meant to negate what paint makers are doing out there. Um, I'm a noob. I'm a noob. I think it's a fun journey to take. And if this inspires you to make your own paint or create your own pigments, well, that's awesome too. So since we've done all this talking, let's get to the act of paint making and walk through that. First, you're going to need something to measure with. Next, you're gonna need something to put your paint in. These are half pans and full pans that fit into watercolor palettes. You'll need some pigment, a mask, a molding tool, your binder, some sort of glass to mix your paint on. Now I'm using a palette, a glass palette, and it seems to work just fine. A mask is crucial here because you don't wanna be inhaling these tiny pieces of pigment. Next, you're going to want to measure out your pigment and then measure out your binder 
Here, this binder requires a two to one ratio, and so I'm following the directions there the best I can. I was pretty precise in my measurement here. I don't know if you need to be that. Uh, I think I got a little more lackadaisical as I made more and more paint. Next, you can see I mixed the pigment and the binder with a little palette knife that I had on hand. I'm mixing up the pigment and the binder so the pigment is fully covered with the binder. Next, I'm mulling this. So what this really means is I'm really mixing the binder and the pigment together to make sure that they are solidly mixed. And some people mix their paint for 30 minutes. Some people mull their paint for 90 minutes. Um, you just want to make sure it's really mixed well. I kind of think of cookies when I think of mixing paint because you're mixing the chocolate chips in with your batter, then you're scraping the sides of the batter bowl, and then you're mixing some more. That's how I feel about paint making. As you can see here, my little palette knife doesn't do a great job of scraping up the paint. I found other tools that did a better job of preserving some of the paint so less of it was wasted. But I also added distilled water at times when I felt like my mixture was a little too dry. Also, you want to test your watercolor paint. So what I found to be a good rule of thumb was once your paint is mixed, get out a brush and a little bit of water, wet that pigment and put it down in your sketchbook and let it dry. Next, you're gonna take a piece of paper towel and you're gonna rub it over that pigment. And if pigment comes off once it's dry, that is an indicator that it might need more binder. Really wanna make sure that you keep track of your mixtures, how much binder versus pigment, which pigments you use, what they are in a sketchbook or a watercolor sketchbook so you can keep track of your mixtures because when you run out of a color, especially when that's a specialty color, you're gonna want to know how to make that again. So once you're satisfied with your color, then you're gonna wanna put it in a half pan or full pan or some kind of receptacle for that paint. Next, I wanted to kind of cover how I mixed colors together. So first, I mixed different pigments, knowing what the end result would be. Then I added binder into this mixture. You can see I use a pipette in my little measuring spoon same process as we did before and you can see that turned out to be a really nice kind of plummy brown color and i repeat the process and mold the paint and as you can see this was one of the items that i was using to see if i could preserve a little more paint and waste a little less again testing the color in my notebook and then once i'm satisfied i'm putting them into half pans now you can see this is where my uh, knife failed me and it broke i wound up getting a bigger knife that wastes a little less paint here i'm using a catalyst it looks and feels a lot like a spatula and I felt like this was one of the best solutions to be able to bring that pigment together and then continue mulling it without wasting paint. If you've followed along with some of my videos you know that I really like core watercolors. I have used Shinhan and Holbein watercolors and they're great, great tools. And so it doesn't mean that I don't love my regular paints or that I don't love bean paints. I'm still a huge fan of bean paints. They're excellent. It's really just a journey of curiosity and I wanted to be able to create my own pigments and colors that I could use regularly that maybe I just don't wanna spend $13 for a tube. I wanna be able to make that pigment over and over or mix colors and create my own paints. 
So these are from the first batches that I did with paint. Now I have a whole lot more than I can hold up here, but uh, they're finally setting and I could, there I even have room to put more paint in there if I want to. Now I just wanted to create a whole bunch of colors with as much binder as I had and see what I could do to see if I could really get some of the colors that I love and create some new ones. I also was really excited about learning how to make paint and specifically making gouache paint because I wanted to be able to supply these things to my students as well, uh, especially like the white gouache. We don't use white too much in my class, but when we do, we I am generally using white ink or white gouache. And I wanted to be able to provide that to my students who I teach in person when we're not in quarantine. I will say I was able to use some of my handmade paints on a painting that I did recently that was of my cat Lucy. There's that video if you want to check that out. And I really loved the color. And so I think that's a benefit also in paint making that you can really just find some colors that you really enjoy and like and buy pigments for those. And it saves you a, bun a bundle of money because how long is this pigment gonna last me? Like forever, unless I start selling these or giving them away on my Patreon. Hey, if you liked this video, let me know you liked it. Leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel if you're into that. And you can see more of my content as I'm moving through my creative journey. Get out there and do something creative. Until next time, I'll see ya later.